Hi, welcome to our video on impaired oxygenation. Now, this is a topic that's important to anybody in nursing or healthcare. Whether your interest is women's health, community health, psych, this all plays a role in how your patients are functioning, whether their brain's working, whether their tissues are being perfused, everyone needs an understanding of oxygenation. Now I labeled this, not all PAO2s are created equal. By the end of this video, you'll understand how I could have a normal PAO2, but I'm really struggling in oxygenation. So let's start with looking at PaO2. Now don't pay attention to the words right now, just focus right over here. This should look very familiar to you and man, stop and enjoy that for just a minute. Like, yay, this makes sense to me. This is an alveoli, right? So if I take the time right here is the alveolar wall. Now this is really thin because gas is exchanged over it and that's why it's really thin but pretty fragile. Remember, you need surfactant to help keep this open and exchanging. Now these little red circles that you see here are considered red blood cells. So I know it's pretty fancy, but that's to help reinforce that concept of we've got the capillary wall, which is very thin. We've got the alveolar wall, which is very thin and fragile because we have the exchange of gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide over these membranes. Now I breathe air in. So it comes in down here and it's exchanged and it goes out to my body. But look at this number right over here. The PaO2 of 90 millimeters of mercury. PaO2 is the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. Now we're not sticking something in here to draw it out, right? This is something that has to be calculated. So we're looking at the pressure of oxygen dissolved in the arterial blood. Now this is a measurement for us to use to see how well oxygen is moving from the lungs into the blood. That's what a PaO2 will tell us. And we know the normal range is 80 to 100. Okay, so why this matters that you have this solid before we move on, this is a calculated measurement. That's what PaO2 is, and I'll give you the formula in just a minute. But it's a calculated measurement, and it tells us, tells us how well oxygen is moving from the lungs to the blood to perfuse the rest of your body. Now, you've probably seen uh, AVG values. This is taken from an arterial blood gas sample. That means you have to draw it from an artery. Every lab has different values. I just showed you an example of average ABG values. They can be different in each lab. But here's what I want to underscore. If you have mastered the six steps in interpreting ABGs, congratulations. That's really cool and that was an accomplishment. But I want you to know that is just the first baby step in understanding acid base imbalance. As the patient becomes um, more critical and other things are involved, there's a lot more to looking at ABG values than just recognizing if they're in respiratory acidosis or alkalosis, metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. So that's great that you've taken that first step, but know that there is so much more for you to learn about that topic. Now back to PaO2. That's the part of ABGs that we're focusing on right here. Um, look at this formula. I put a picture of a lab tech down there because these are highly skilled, highly trained, educated people. This is part of the process when they get our um, lab blood samples down there, what they run them through the machines. But this is a formula that's used to help us under, uh, calculate PaO2. It involves the barometric pressure, water vapor pressure, fractional concentrate of inspired oxygen, which we'll talk about next, and the gas exchange ratio. You and I never have to deal with this formula, and there's other formulas, but we don't have to deal with this kind of fancy math because our lab techs take care of this for us, and we just get the results of the PaO2. But see why it matters that you have an accurate FiO2 on your ABG order. So if someone's doing an ABG, you want to make sure that you know the FiO2 and you document it, what the patient was on when those samples were drawn. Okay, so that's PaO2. Let's look at FiO2. And honestly, I just love this cartoon of a red blood cell with an oxygen mask. I thought that was hilarious, but 
I do tend to have a warped sense of humor. So let's look at fraction of inspired O2 or oxygen. That's what FiO2 stands for. So it's the concentration of inspired oxygen. Now, if I, if I just take a breath right now, I'm on room air. You can't see me, but I don't have any oxygen masks on. So room air is 21%, or you see it represented as 0.21. Now, FiO2 can range from room air to 1.0, which is 100%, because this stands for 21%. This equals 100%. Now that seems like cool, man, 100% oxygen, that would feel great, but know that we weren't made to live on 100% oxygen, so this can actually do some damage to your lung tissues. Now where do we get that room air is 21%? Let me show you. I've made an amazing pie graph for you. Ready? Ooh, ah, yeah, there it is. So you see that when I take a big deep breath of room air, what I'm getting mostly of is a nitrogen. That's the big orange part of the pie. Only 21% of that is oxygen. I put a tiny sliver in there of argon just to get a feel for it. And you see that carbon dioxide didn't even make my pie shape because it's just too tiny. There's also some other things in the air, but this didn't make it either. So what I wanted you to get is this is where we get the, the reference to room air is 21% oxygen. It's actually 20.95%, but we round up for that. Okay, so we've talked about what PaO2 is. We talk, it's calculated. We get it from a blood sample and then use a fancy math and lab to give it. We've talked about what FiO2 is and why room air is 21%. Now let's look at that ratio. Why a normal range of PaO2, FiO2, why is that range what we look at? Well, if you take the PO2, which is normally 80 to 100, divide it by the FiO2, the normal range is 300 to 500. Now make sure you write that down. That normal range is an important reference point for you for the rest of this video as we fill it out. So let's do the math. Let's say let's we know the ratio is PaO2 divided by FiO2. Let's take my PaO2 divided by room air. Well, you know that room air is 21%. And let's say, I'm just going to round up, let's say my PaO2 is 98 millimeters of mercury. Okay, pretty impressive, right? Well, you don't know any different. We're not drawing ABGs, so we're going to go with that. Let's say that my PaO2 is 98 and I'm only breathing in room air. So let's do the math. We know in order to do that ratio, I'm going to divide my PaO2, which is 98, by 0.21 because I'm breathing room air. That's going to give me a number 466.7. So 466.7. Now think back without looking at your notes, is that normal? Well, goodness, I hope so, but let me think back to what the normal range is. Ah, yeah, it's a 300 to 500. So we are spot on as we would expect because I'm breathing room air and I have a pretty good PaO2. That math makes sense. Now, let's mess with my PaO2. Let's crank it down to just still within normal, but I'm only gonna be breathing no room air. So let's say my PaO2 is 80. Okay, so now that we've changed that number to 80, I'm still on room air, 80 divided by 21. Okay, so that would be 380.9. Is that normal? Sure is, because it's still within the range of 300 to 500. Now you gotta wonder why I'm at 80. That's kind of at the low end. See, so figure out what else is going on. I'd have to ask some more questions because lab values are just numbers unless there's a clinician involved looking at all the other assessment data. Okay, so remember that you are such a critically important piece of the puzzle. But what do you think the impact is going to be if we have to increase the FiO2? What if I'm not just on room air? What if I start to really go downhill? I really start to decline. So we're not on 21% anymore. What is going to happen to that PaO2 FiO2 ratio? Let's take a look. Ready? 
All right, so let's say that you have to put me on 80% O2. Okay, that's a big deal. I've gone from 21% to 80%. So I'm going to divide 80 by 0.8 to represent the 80%. So that's a pretty easy math to do. That puts me at, whoa, 100. And we know that that is well below normal. So I can still have a normal PaO2 of 80, right? That you, If you looked at that, you would say, well, hello, that's normal. Because right? it's 80 to 100 is normal. But what you have to consider and what the PaO2, FiO2 ratio does for us is it matters if I'm on oxygen, and I sure am in this example, I'm at 80%. So this lets you know I am in severe distress. Now let's apply this to acute respiratory distress syndrome. I want to give you a quick look at that and I'll show you why this 100 means I'm significantly in trouble and how we use the PaO2, FiO2 when implied to ARDS. Now this is a clinical syndrome, which yeah, thanks, that's a prof laws. It's got syndrome right in the name of it. Don't look at the words first. Let's look at these pictures. This is normal lungs. See, you see the lung shape? That's good. This is probably pretty good functioning tissue from what we can tell on an x-ray. But look at lungs typical of ARDS. Um, you know, you don't have to be a radiologist to know, whoa, that's not good. So ARDS is a clinical syndrome that's characterized by these things severe hypoxemia. So you have really poor oxygenation in the blood. You've got bilateral infiltrates, check and check. You've got reduced pulmonary compliance. Now I can't see that on a chest x-ray, but I can tell you it's likely there. Now, and initially when they started defining ARDS, there was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of disagreement on what was ARDS. In 2013, a group of super smart people and experts got together and they came up with the Berlin definition of ARDS. So look at the first three. We've got bilateral opacities on chest imaging. Uh, we know that, but look, you can't explain it because the patient has effusions or they have lung collapse or they have nodules. It's not due to cardiac failure or fluid overload. And when they say hydrostatic edema, that means um, hydrostatic edema is when you have an, an abnormal, so it's way above normal, increase in your extravascular water. Now that's caused by either you've got elevated pressures in your pulmonary circulation in your lungs, like in congestive heart failure, or you've got just a super high intravascular volume. So we're going to look at these three things and make sure that this isn't what's going on in your patient. If we've ruled those out, what becomes our focus is what we looked at in this video. So I'm going to make those other three kind of fade off a little bit into the distance. And I want to talk about impaired oxygenation. Now you'll see for the Berlin definition of ARDS, they're on PEEP, positive end expiratory pressure, or CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. That's also part of the Berlin definition. But what I want you to focus on are these numbers right here, because we're talking about mild, moderate or severely impaired oxygenation. And this is in reference to the PaO2 FiO2 ratio that we've talked about. So when you're thinking about oxygenation, let's talk about, let's review the concepts that we've discussed together. So PaO2 is the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. The normal range is 80 to 100, but you already know I can have a normal PaO2, but I am really in big trouble because you have to have me on so much oxygen to maintain that PaO2. Now we use a complex formula to calculate the PaO2 and thank you to all the highly educated lab techs out there that provide that for us. We know that room air is 21% oxygen and we know that the ratio of the PaO2 to FiO2 can help us evaluate the level of impairment of oxygenation, the patient's ability to move oxygen from the lungs to the arteries. So normal is 300 to 500 is the normal range for PaO2 to FiO2. And the ratio is also used in the Berlin definition of ARDS. Remember, if you have that PaO2 FiO2 ratio of 200 to 300, that's considered 
mild impairment of your oxygenation. 100 to 200 is moderate impairment of oxygenation, and less than 100 is severe impairment to your oxygenation. So thanks for hanging out with me with this video today. Hopefully you can apply this concept to wherever you head in your nursing career. Best wishes to each of you.